Welcome everyone, I hope you're all well. This is part two of Tyranny in Victoria. In part one, I explained how the tyrant, Daniel Andrews, the Premier of Victoria, denied justice to people who had a valid and just complaint. The reason why he denied them justice is simple. It would have caused him embarrassment. In this video, we're going to look at something else that the dangerous and proud tyrant Daniel Andrews is doing. What's that? He prevents any reporting of government actions that might put him in a bad light. Daniel Andrews is well aware that his ongoing role as Premier of Victoria depends on him getting good press coverage and not having any of his corrupt actions highlighted to the public. Many people are already suspicious that he is a proud and arrogant man, and he doesn't want anything to appear in the media that would reinforce that perception. For example, the investigation into Daniel Andrews' branch stacking practices was all done behind closed doors and kept from being widely publicised. The type of reporting that Daniel Andrews likes is where the journalists come to him and say, Dan, tell us what you want us to say and we'll say it for you. And tell us who you don't like and we'll go and slander and defame them for you. We are your slaves, Dan. Just tell us what to do and walk all over us. Our media are worse than prostitutes. At least prostitutes demand payment when they debase themselves. But our media debase themselves for no payment at all. They say, we're pleased to lick your boots, Dan, and we'll do it for you for nothing. Daniel Andrews only tolerates this type of reporter. The fawning, doe-eyed type where the reporters are jelly at his feet. Unfortunately for Daniel Andrews, there are a few reporters who do not kowtow to him and slobber all over his boots. There are some who ask Daniel Andrews difficult questions, and he does not like it. One such person is Avi Yemeni from Rebel News. Daniel Andrews hates this man with a passion and has refused to have anything to do with him. He had Avi thrown out of a press meeting by one of his minions and then refused to own up to it or say why he allowed it to happen. Then Avi applied for a formal press pass and was rejected with no explanation given. Then Avi got some lawyers and took the Victorian government to court. Daniel Andrews became so obsessed that he got government lawyers on the job. He also paid for private lawyers with our public money to work on this case. This is how demented he becomes when people dare challenge him. The job of all these lawyers was to create paperwork and legal activity so that Avi's costs would go through the roof. They even appealed to laws dating back some 200 years just to create work and legal distractions and other nonsense. Daniel Andrews became obsessive in his hatred of Avi. How dare someone question Daniel Andrews? He responded just like Xi Jinping, the tyrant who leads the CCP in China, when his authority and position is challenged. Avi also made the comment that, in the past, he's actually reported from Hong Kong about the Chinese Communist Party's activity, and not even the CCP censored people in Hong Kong the way Daniel Andrews does in Victoria. Daniel Andrews has become a massive Marxist tyrant that no one can challenge. The end result was that Arby's legal bill went from an estimated $100,000 to around $268,000. Arby said that this was Daniel Andrews' way of saying, don't ever challenge me again. We see how Daniel Andrews will use public money in his fanatical hatred of people, and he corrupts whatever he's able to, to make sure those who oppose him are frustrated in every way possible. This is how the tyrant Daniel Andrews works. He will only tolerate people who lick his boots and do his bidding in his dirty work, like those in our mainstream media. Daniel Andrews has done other things in his obsessive hatred for Avi Yemeni. For example, he has enlisted the help of a PR man to run an anonymous anti Arby Yemeni account on Twitter. This PR man is also paid with our public money. He slanders and defames Arby at every opportunity and defends and protects everything Daniel Andrews does. Arby approached the Supreme Court for Twitter to unmask and identify this PR man who was hiding behind the anonymity of a Twitter account. Surprisingly, Arby won the case. Evidently, the Supreme Court found that the actions of Daniel Andrews' PR man were highly questionable and possibly illegal, and this PR man needed to be held accountable for what he was doing. No doubt Daniel Andrews will get into a fit of rage and temper over this. Let's see what comes of it and what Daniel Andrews does to protect himself and escape the consequences of his corrupt practices. This is the tyranny in Victoria right now. In these videos, we've looked at only a few examples. I could go on with more. All you have to do is watch Arby Yemeni's videos to see how corrupt, arrogant and hate-filled Daniel Andrews is towards those who put him on the spot and ask him real difficult questions. 
Victoria is headed by an arrogant man who answers to no one and tolerates no challenges or questions he doesn't like. He is prepared to twist and break the law if necessary to get his way. And to make things worse, the public seem to love him and applaud what he does. Give us more tyranny and corruption, they say. But don't tell us what you do. We have such delicate constitutions, we might get a bit confused by what we hear. The mainstream media are only too happy to do his dirty work and do it for nothing. As I have said, they're worse than prostitutes. And for genuine journalists doing their job properly, well, they better look out. Stay safe, my friends, from this maniac and his minions. As I said in part one, the government is not there to protect or help you. It is really there to protect Daniel Andrews. This is what Victoria has become.